Before taking it to bits, I'd like to give you a demonstration of this autonomous flying drone. And it's, uh, I've spent quite a lot of time trying to demonstrate this. It seems to have this knack of going off shot. But anyway, here we go. You click a button inside and it puts on a little disco light show. And then you just simply throw it in there. Yeah, and then it just takes off and hits objects. It's not perhaps best suited. Uh, green means it's gone into safe mode. It's perhaps not best suited to clutter workshop. Come back. Yes, let's do one little, one more little try and we'll see if we can get it to stay in shot. Not the beard. <laughs> right. That's enough. It's time to take it to bits. Okay, you pesky little beard shredder, it is time to pay the price. That snagged the beard up well and truly, but that's what you expect, I guess. This is an autonomous little drone, a cheap toy, but it's so clever. It's got all the brains and it's got a battery of roughly about 200 milliamp hour capacity. It's got an infrared receiver, and I believe that's the receiver, and then it's got one, two, three uh, transmitter LEDs that I'm guessing fire out modulated uh, light. It can also detect a remote with modulated light to sort of basically not to control it as such, but just to actually sort of divert it. And uh, it detects, it uses the infrared to detect when it's close to walls um, and also when it's close to the floor. But it doesn't detect, the way it detects when it, it hits the ceiling, if it hits the ceiling for any length of time, it will gradually uh, wind the power down because it knows it's not sort of changing height, I guess, until it drops back off the ceiling. It seems to have various manoeuvres to actually recover in most situations, except in busy cluttered workshops. <laughs> to launch it, you just throw it into the air once you've powered it up. To stop it, you just grab it and then tilt it at 90 degrees and it will stop. And there's other things you can do that uh, will make it sort of backflip in the air. It's quite a clever little thing. It's a bit creepy when you're watching it because it will actually hover static in, a, 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 in the middle of the room and then rotate in the air and then just dart off as if it's seen something. It's very clever. But anyway, I'm going to take it to bits. I am. Oh, another thing is worth mentioning. It can crash. I don't mean crash into walls. I'm going to have to use the special stuff to take this to bits. But I mean, it can crash as in software crash. It's only done it once, but when it did, it was quite a scary thing. So there's some screws around the edge here. Uh, what it did, it suddenly crashed with two of the rotors running at full speed. And nothing I could do would stop it. So if you tried throwing it into the air, it would just rock it onto the ground and then it would catapult across the ground and hit the wall. If you pressed and held the button, there's a little button on the side, it didn't reset it, it just kept uh, running. It would just, you know, even if you held it in, I thought there was maybe some master reset to that, but it, there isn't. And I also tried plug it into charge, hoping that it might cause some sort of interrupt to trigger and uh, get the microcontrol under control, but it didn't. I actually had to hold it, and it was quite chilly. I had to hold it at the right angle so it wasn't blowing ice cold air across my hands. I had to hold it for quite some considerable time before uh, it actually, the battery ran flat and it, then it sort of reached the voltage threshold that the processor reset. It's only done it once, but when it does, it's quite freaky. Is that coming off? Is that coming off? It is coming off. That just presses in, I believe. It is, it's just pins. It's quite neat. It is a bit creepy when you see it doing its stuff, though. So what do we have here? What do we have? Is this coming off? Yes, it is. It's lifting. It's coming out with the little motors. And the wiring looms. Okay, okay. Let's see if I cannot turn it on accidentally and shred my fingers. Let's pull the blades off. I'm not expecting a huge amount in here. Actually, I'm, I'm seeing more than I was expecting. We shall take a closer look at this. Uh, I shall try and lift this out. It lifts out as a neat... Oh, there's the infrared sensors. Are they kind of glued in? Or are they just pressed? I think they might be glued in. Or are they clipped in? Oh, I think they might be clipped. They are clipped. That's neat. The charger for it... Uh, 
is in a USB plug and it's got the little jack connector on it. But um, although it says that it's a, uh, it says on the in quite well, it's just embossing it. USB input five volt, zero point five to two amps. Output three point seven volt. 600 milliamps it charged at 350 milliamps i'm not sure this one the open circuit voltage and output of this is five volts so i'm guessing there must be some charging circuitry on here right tell you what tell you what uh let's diffuse this by taking the lithium battery off look at the wires and that that is quite thick i'm going to diffuse the bomb so i'm going to clip that and that and then I shall take some pictures of this so we can look at it closer. Does this have any protective circuitry on it? Or is this just a raw battery? Hold on, let's uh, peel some of this tape off it. If I can, maybe I'll just uh, stick this metal object into the vicinity of the contacts. Does it have any protection? I don't think it does, but uh, I shall explore this a bit further. It might have protection, but I don't immediately see it right at the moment. Right, tell you what, I'm going to pause and uh, take some pictures of this and then we can explore the circuitry on it. Some considerable time later, and I mean hours later, that was a hell of a bit of reverse engineering to do. The answers aren't all clear because the microcontroller appears to be a dedicated unit, custom programmed, custom labelled, and I can't even trace what is probably a gyro or uh, accelerometer type chip. Very odd. Anyway, let's take a look at the first bit of the circuitry. This is where it starts charging. It's the little USB charger. It's nothing more than basically a current limiting resistor, 3.9 ohm resistor, and a transistor uh, with a resistor in series than LED. And basically speaking, when the it's charging at fairly high current, the voltage across that resistor will be high enough to turn the transistor on and the LED lights to show it's charging. It means that when it drops below about 150 milliamps, the LED will go out, but it may still be charging. So it's not a super accurate thing, but it's just, it's cheap and simple. The other part of the charging, charging circuitry is on the battery itself. It does have a protection chip. It's got the integrated all-in-one sort of Whereas you'd have normally have the DW1 voltage sensors and the separate MOSFET, it's the all-in-one integrated protection chip with that little uh, 100 ohm resistor and capacitor just to decouple it from the supply rails of the battery just to uh, ensure stable operation. Very, very simple. The battery is supposedly 300 milliamp power. I had varying results, but now that I know that the battery charge status is not that accurate, I get the feeling the battery's not being discharged too low and I get the feeling it's not being fully charged or if you left it on, it would eventually cut off in this chip. But uh, this LED on the charger will go out long before that. Now we get to the meaty stuff. Here are the two sides of the board. I've flipped one of them. That's why the text is reversed. So that, say for instance, these three connections for the infrared receiver match up with these three over here. There are one, two, three, four, ten A transistors, MOSFETs, driving the motors. The motors, there are the four little motors with strong magnets in them. And there's the four rotors, but there's two of them run one direction, two of them run the other. And they have different coloured wires for that. One of them's got black and white, uh, or should I say two of them black and white, and others have uh, red and blue. And they run in the opposite directions to provide stability. Cut off here, well, cut off here is an RGB LED. It's the one that's used to indicate the status, whether it's uh, in standby mode, whether the battery's running low, or whether it's uh, in sort of powered up mode when it does its little coloured light show. Things worthy of note in this circuit board. The KUD32MO1 is this custom chip. Um, I couldn't find any information other than a German site where they showed a picture of the same type of unit and said, we can't find this chip either. So that uh, appears to be dedicated, maybe mask programmed or custom programmed to this particular task. This little chip here, again, it's got some numbers. Um, is it 12731A? Um, can I, where is the circuit board? The circuit board is here. I shall take a look at it through my 
magnifying glass. This is something I'm instantly going to regret. Yeah, it looks like 12731A. And below it, it says AK561LS1. I tried both those numbers in Google. I could not find uh, anything on this chip. It is just basically, it's going to be a niche chip just dedicated towards tasks like um, in mobile. It will be used in mobile phones and stuff like that, and and drones. I'm guessing just for positional sensing. So it could be the uh, compass, gyro, accelerometer, everything rolled into one type chip. We've got some very interesting regulator and enabling circuitry. We have this regulator, which is a 3-volt regulator. Again, I couldn't find these components easily. This appears to be a transistor switching the uh, negative for this regulator and this regulator. This one produces, with this little inductor here, it produces a 5-volt supply. That one produces a 3-volt supply. It looks as though this transistor is actually controlled from that chip, or it might just be that this has an enable that does, does that at the same time. Very small circuit board. As you can see, the contrast in the red is not very easy to see through. It's been frustrating. This transistor switches in for red LEDs, but there's more to it than that. And this transistor is an enable transistor that enables that transistor, but seems to possibly enable other circuitry as well. It's a bit odd, and I shall show you what I've doodled out here. Let us put this down here and zoom in. So it starts with the incoming supply from the USB charger. There's the resistor and charging LED and the transistor, and there's the sense resistor. So as long as there's a high enough current flowing, the voltage across this sense resistor will be enough to turn on that uh, transistor and make the LED light to show it's charging. The odd thing there is that potentially at high charge currents, quite a lot of current's going to go through the base and emitter of that transistor. There's the lithium cell with its protection chip, and there's the sense components across that, uh, the supply feeding that protection chip, and that just measures the voltage. It will cut off if the voltage, is, the charge voltage is too high. In this case, it's been used to terminate the charge, and also it will shut the output off if the voltage is going too low, although I think the MCU, the microcontroller unit, will be doing that uh, before it gets there. The, each of the rotors has a motor with a capacitor across it, and a MOSFET. The MOSFET is a 10k pull-down resistor, but a direct connection for the gate of the MOSFET straight over to the microcontroller. The infrared enable pulls the, all three of the infrared LEDs, the one that points down and the ones that point out the side. It pulls them to the positive rail, but those infrared LEDs, I shall just write, I'll draw the little LED squiggles in and just IR, are then modulated individually by the microcontroller itself. I don't know if they're all happening at the same time or it is sequentially pulsing around them or little bursts just so it can detect where it's detecting a set of disturbance. I think it can probably detect them individually. The microcontroller receives a signal from the infrared LEDs. From that, 3-volt regulators a connection via resistor to the um, and a capacitor which provides a stable supply for the infrared receiver that then sends a signal back to the microcontroller. For the RGB LED, it just uh, has basically the RGB LED is a common negative to the negative connection of the batteries and then a resistor per LED going to the microcontroller. There's something very odd. When you push the button, it doesn't just send a signal to the processor saying, wake up. It, well, it, it does in a way. It doesn't just, it's not like the processor's active. Everything sleeps by the look of it. But when you press that button, as well as signaling an input to the microcontroller, it also wakes everything up and starts, it starts, initiates the process of getting those reg, uh, regulators powered up. But it also, rather bizarrely, the microcontroller unit can send the signal to the infrared enable, that's a sort of level shifter, which will then enable the infrared LEDs, but when you push that button, there's a diode there that also pulls them down and enables the infrared LEDs. I'm not quite sure what that is. I think part of the reason they disable those with that uh, transistor is purely everything is geared up towards sleeping properly, shutting the processor down pretty much completely. When the processor basically says, 
let's go to sleep now, everything just shuts off. And uh, the quiescent current is super low. And it's when you push that button that initiates the wake up sequence that then it as long as that button, when that button is being held, the processor boots up very quickly and then it turns everything on. Very interesting. Um, it, it seems so simple when I describe it like that, but it really isn't. The circuitry is hugely complex. I was perplexed by this 10 mi 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 uh, micro Henry inductor initially uh, until I realised I had to power it up and probe it to actually find that this capacitor here is 5 volts across it. And likewise, these uh, other regulators, they were just deactivated. They, their negative uh, connection was uh, isolated until this uh, powered up. So this was initially the, uh, presumably gate pin, if that's what that is, uh, was turned off, but then when it was powered up, it was at about 2.6 volts. So I'm guessing that's a MOSFET, but that is a guess. HRKP, I did not find much helpful uh, about that. I could find them being sold, uh, but not a huge amount of data. But there we go. It's an interesting thing. It's a very interesting, quite a complex design. There was one thing that had me riddling. I thought initially that when this transistor was turned on, it also would actually keep the microcontroller awake, but it doesn't seem to do that. And it makes sense that that pin is also used to detect the button being pressed to turn it back off again. But there we go. It's it's mass produced. It's got these anonymous chips, which kind of a, it's a bit of a bit of a party ender for that because uh, we don't really know what these are. But it does at least show the sort of basic operation and how everything is energy managed and how, say for instance, these little motors are switched. It's quite amazing that these are such powerful little motors and that these little MOSFETs are capable of, uh, you know, driving such powerful motors. But very impressive. I shall disarm this. I shall tape this back up and put a connector on it before I end up pushing it into a pile of stuff and causing a little lithium inferno on my bench. But there we go. That's it. That's what's inside. It's extremely good value for money simply because it is ultra mass produced. And uh, these circuit boards must be churned out by the, the bazillion. But very neat. Well worth taking to bits.